Hey there, this is Andrew and welcome back. Today we're going to be continuing our chess series by creating the system for placing the pieces on the board. We're also going to be laying the groundwork for all of our special pieces, which will give you a decent idea of how the next few videos are going to play out. So let's go ahead and hop into Unity so we can look at some of the scripts we're going to be creating in this video, as well as some of the prefabs or all of the prefabs. So here we are in Unity. And out of all of that, the first thing that we're going to be making is our piece manager. Then we're going to make the base piece script, and then we're going to make a script for each of those special pieces. We're not necessarily going to be putting a lot of logic in them within this video, but we're going to need them set up for what we're going to be doing in the piece manager. And once we have all of that created, we're going to go ahead and open up our base piece in Visual Studio. So here we are in base piece, where we have basically created an abstract class that inherits from event trigger. Now we inherited from event trigger because we wanted to take advantage of canvases on drag, on hold, and all of those great builds and events. So we don't have to make all that logic ourselves. And then taking a look at our variables, we have a public color that we're just calling color. And this is going to be essentially handling what team this piece is on. Now I could have used an enum or something along those lines, but for simplicity's sake, we're just going to be using a variable of the color type and we're initializing that to clear. We're then going to have a couple of variables for two different cells, one being the original cell and another one being the current cell that the piece is residing on. Now we do this because once the game is over, we want to reset the board and put all of the pieces back where they belong. And we can do that without reloading the entire scene or anything like that. We can just put the pieces where they belong and reactivate them. It's pretty simple. And then below that, we have more sort of component based variables where we have one for the rec transform of the piece, as well as a reference to the piece manager. And then moving down to the first function of our script, we're going to have a public virtual function that we're calling setup, and it takes a number of parameters. The first thing is going to be a color that we're calling new team color, a color 32 that we're calling sprite color, and then a reference to a piece manager. The setup function is basically being used as a constructor and it's going to be called when this piece is created. And the big distinction here is between the two colors that we're passing in. The team color is going to be for that variable that I showed you up at the top of the script. And the sprite color is just going to be that. It's going to be the sprite color. So we can have a different color for what is essentially running the logic in the background and the color that the team is going to be presented as. Because as you can see, we're sort of using both a blue and an orange color instead of just a simple black and white. But going down into the actual body of the function, we're setting a reference to our piece manager, the normal color. We're going to be getting the image and setting the color using that new sprite color. And then we're going to be getting the component for our rect transform variable. All right, so now once the piece has been created and set up, it needs to be placed. So that's going to be happening in the function right below this one, where we're going to be passing in a reference to a cell. And this is where we're going to be setting that current cell and that original cell variable that I talked about earlier. We're also going to be getting our current cell of this piece and setting its current piece to the instance of this script using the keyword this. And this chunk of code right here just basically handles all of that backend logic for handling where a piece is and being able to ask particular cells on the board if it's occupied or not. And then for the actual visual aspect of it in the section below it, this is where we're going to be setting the position of the piece to align with the cell that it's been given as well as activating the piece. And we activate it because we're going to be reusing this function for when we have to reset the board and replace everything. All right, and I think this script is done. Now let's move on to the next one, which is going to be even bigger. Just kidding. It's just all for all the special pieces. You're just going to leave them empty for now, but make sure they're all inheriting from the base piece class that we just created. And just as an example for now, I'm showing the bishop, but make sure you're doing this for each of the scripts for each of the special pieces. And that about does it for the pieces themselves. Let's go ahead and look at the piece manager, which is going to be running the logic for creating all of the pieces and placing them on the board. And for our variables, the first thing we're going to have is the prefab for the piece that we're going to be creating. And then we're going to be putting each piece we create into one of the two lists below. It's either going to be in the list for the white pieces or in a list for the black pieces. Followed by that, we have a bit of an array consisting of 16 strings. And I'll explain this a little bit more in just a second after we look at the dictionary right below it, because both of these things sort of go hand in hand. I'm basically using the piece order list and we're going to be populating that 
with a bunch of different strings. And we'll be using each of those strings as a key into our dictionary. And if you notice, in the piece order array, we have two lines here. We have one that's just P's all the way across, followed by R, K, N, B, K. And if you notice, that's sort of the setup of a chessboard. The first row primarily consisting of pawns, followed by the royalty, essentially, with the rook, the knight, the bishop, the king, the queen, and so on. And I'll be showing you a little bit more about why I did this and how this works once we get into the functions below. And the first function we're going to look at is that setup function, which is does the exact same thing it did for our base piece, which is going to essentially be serving as our constructor. Except we have just one parameter instead of three, where we're just passing in a reference to the board. And then on the first two lines here, we are essentially doing the same thing. We are making a call to the function create pieces, and we're passing in three different variables. And if you remember in the script we just created, we had a color for the team it was going to be on, a color for the sprite, as well as a reference to, well, in that case, it was the piece manager, but in this case, it's going to be the board. But to look at the overall structure of this script, once we're creating these pieces, we're going to place them on the board, which is going to happen in the two lines below this one. And then I have a small comment here for a later function that's going to be switching the sides, or it's going to be determining which player goes first and setting their interactivity. So now let's take a closer look at the create pieces function. Now this is a pretty big function, but it's pretty simple. All we're doing here is we're creating a bunch of pieces, we're setting up its transform, and we're adding components to it for whatever piece we want it to be and behave as. So in the first line here, we're creating a list that we're gonna be storing all the pieces for the team that it's gonna be on. And then we're gonna have a for loop that's going to go through and create all the pieces that we're going to need using that piece order array that I showed you earlier that contained all of those strings. And then within the loop, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create the new game object that's going to represent our piece. So we're going to create a new piece object based on that piece prefab that I just showed you, and we're going to be setting the parent of it to the piece manager so we can keep our hierarchy nice and clean. Then we're going to be adjusting the transform to ensure that we are keeping the same scale of the object that we have just created, as well as making sure that our rotation is correct. Now comes to the part where I talked about that array as well as that dictionary with the key that I showed you earlier. And this is kind of silly and you really don't need to do this, it's kind of verbose, but it's a very simple way of changing the makeup of the board. So if you wanted to do simple game types, like if you wanted to, you could create an entire game that just consisted of pawns called Surf's Up, you could create an entire series of... Uh, or you could create one with just knights called country club or just kings that would be called no country for old men or just no, I don't know. But the point is you can easily change which pieces are going to be where on the board just by changing that string array instead of what would typically be you hard coding those values to tell each piece where it's going to start on the board. So I hope that made sense. Let's go ahead and move on to where we're actually going to be adding the component based on the dictionary using the key. So what it does, it's gonna take that string, it's gonna check it against that library or that dictionary, and it's gonna say, hey, uh, what component or what type is referenced using this key? And we're gonna add a component based on that type. So this also prevents us from needing to have several different prefabs for each different piece, when the only difference really is the script that's gonna be on it, as well as the sprite. But once we add that piece to the game object that we just created, we're going to call the setup method on it. And that's the setup method that we actually just wrote in the previous script, where we're going to be passing in those two colors as well as a reference to this piece manager. And we're passing in the reference to the piece manager simply because we want to be able to access all of the functionality for resetting the board and things like that in the future. And then once our entire list has been created, we're going to be calling the return function and we're going to be returning the list of new pieces. And now let's move on down to the place pieces function, which where I mentioned earlier is also being called within the setup method. And what we have here is a for loop that we are basically counting out all the integers that we're going to need for just one row. Because what we're passing in here is two integers, which is going to be the row for both the pawns as well as the royalty. For let's say the white, which would be the first player, which will be at the bottom of the screen. And since we built our board using a simple origin, for the pawn as an example, the row would be one and for the royalty it would be zero. That essentially means we want to place all these pieces on this row and count all the way across the board. And we're going to be also passing in a list to all of those pieces that we created for each team, as well as a reference to the board. And we need the board in this case so we can reference the cells so we can place the actual pieces on it. So we have this for loop. And then on the first line here, we're going to be calling that place method on the piece that we wrote earlier. 
and we're going to be passing in a cell. And what we're going to be using here is that integer i in the pawn row. So we already have the y value, and then we're using this for loop to count the x all the way across. And then below that, it's very similar, but we are adding 8 to the integer for the index of the piece array. And that is what is going to get that second line that I showed you earlier at the top of the script that started with the rook, the knight, the bishop, and all those pieces. And that just about does it for the piece manager. Let's go ahead and open up the game manager we made in the last video so we can call that setup method that we just wrote. And here we are in the game manager where we're gonna be first creating a public variable for a reference to the piece manager. And this is gonna be the piece manager that is going to be in our scene eventually, and it's gonna be childed to our parent canvas. And now within start, after we create the board, we're going to be using a piece manager reference to call the setup function. And we're going to be passing in a reference to the board so we can have a reference to all of the cells that the board contains. And that about does it for all the programming in this video. Let's go ahead and hop back into Unity so we can take a closer look at our prefabs and what we need to do to get them to work with each other. And the first thing is going to be our piece prefab that's going to be based on a canvas image with a width and a height of 75 which is all we're really going to need because we're going to be adding the component for each of the pieces when the piece is created. And now looking at the piece manager, it's going to be based on a canvas that we're going to be stretching all across its parent and we're going to be setting its left and its right values to 400 and its top and its bottom to 50. And what this is going to give us is a perfect square within the middle of our screen that's going to be able to lay right on top of our board. We're then going to be using the piece manager script that we created as well as dropping in a reference to that piece prefab into the public field. We're then going to have a canvas component and a graphic raycaster which is going to enable us to be able to interact with the pieces that are childed to the piece manager. All right so all we have to do now is take our piece manager and drag it into our scene and child it to our parent canvas and then go to our game manager and give it a reference to that piece manager. So we can call that setup method. And we're pretty much done. All we have to do is hit play and you should see something that looks like this where we have squares that represent all the pieces for each of the teams set to whatever color you may want for the sprite color. In our case, if you copied me, it would be a nice blue and a nice orangish red. And that about does it for this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.